This, I'm, I'm now going to talk about something that's really special to me, um, which is the new multi-region support that was recently added in 6.0. Um, and it's special not only because I spent the last year and a half painfully implementing it, but also <laughs> because uh, it removes a really big caveat that Foundation DEB has had up until this point, um, which is that generally if you're as a user choosing Foundation DB, one of the reasons you're using it is obviously like data safety and availability, right? You want your database to be like always alive and never lose your data. Um, and so the fact that Foundation DB has basically been generally designed to work within one data center has uh, kind of been that caveat I was talking about. It's it's like well, it's great if they're all co-located together, but uh, I want to be safe against failing a region, um, and so like. This the 6.0 release like is going to remove that caveat, and so I'm really happy to be here and share this share the, this new feature with you. So I already talked about myself, um, and I've already done a lot of the motivation, but you know the the obvious reason why do you want multi-region support? You want to survive. You want to remain available right when the region is out. Um, uh, and the other the other one that's a little uh, that's also important for some people in some applications is potentially you want to be able to serve reads locally from a lot of different regions, uh, so that can make a big difference for some applications. Uh, so coming to this problem, um, we had Foundation DB, and we're looking at what we can we do with in, in multiple regions. Um, and the first thought was sort of to take the same approach that a lot of databases, like SQL databases, use, which is basically to set up some asynchronous replication between your primary region and a completely different Foundation DB database that you're going to run in the secondary region. Um, so these are just completely independent data databases, and we're basically shipping the change log from the first one. And there's some external agent to the system, like these DR agents, where they're taking the data and applying it to the other region in version order. Um, this approach it has a huge flaw, um, which is that basically, if you lose your primary region, right, just like it's asynchronous replication, you're going to lose some amount of data if, uh, that hasn't been synced yet from the primary to the secondary if you just instantaneously lose your primary. So this is leaves you like with a really, really hard choice as an operator, right? Because your database is down, and most databases failures, like a region failure generally is not permanent unless you know there's something really bad going down. So you're stuck with like, okay, do I wait till it's back or do I choose to lose some data? Uh, and no one wants to make that choice. Uh, it's of, if you are losing data, though, here's the sales pitch. It's the best kind of data loss you could have because you're going to lose just the tail of the mutation log. So you're basically going to roll back to a consistent point in time. But still, no one wants to make the choice. Um, the other kind of bad thing about this design um, is because these two databases are completely separate, they actually don't have the opportunity to cooperate. So let's say we were running double replication in both sides. And in the primary, there's not a region failure, but we just lose both replicas. We lose two machines simultaneously. We'd really like it if we could heal from that by grabbing the data from the secondary. But because they're different clusters, like there's no ability to do this healing across, across the regions. This generally is going to mean that we need to run with more replicas in both sides, which is obviously going to cost you something. Um, so our first attempt at doing something better here uh, was uh, what was called three data center mode in the 5.0 releases, or it's still there in 6.0. Um, and the basic concept was, well, let's just take Foundation DB and spread the processes across regions. Um, and this approach works, uh, but it comes with some pretty big caveats. So the first one is you're, you're basically the, 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 the way the setup works, first off, um, is that you're going to have three different regions. Um, and you're going to put your transaction logs in two of the three regions, and you have storage nodes uh, across all of them, like two in each, two storage replicas in each of each, the regions for six total. Um, because we're synchronously replicating to multiple regions on the transaction logs, um, we now can survive a region failure with no data loss. So that's you know checks that check box. Um, however, uh, the they're, they're, the costs here are. Um, that basically the system wasn't 
really designed to handle this configuration. We sort of jammed it in there by spreading our processes everywhere. So you're going to have more, because you're replicating across regions, you're going to have a cross-region network latency as part of your commit path. So that's going to obviously increase your latencies. And for some applications, having 40 milliseconds is on your commits is going to be a big deal. Um, the, the other thing is that basically the data distribution algorithm that we have um, is really targeted for machine failures, not region failures. And what you want to do in these two cases is dramatically different. So if a, a regular machine fails, you really just want to replicate and, and like heal from that loss and put the data somewhere else. If an entire region fails, you know, you're losing one third of your total capacity. It would be a disaster to try and copy all of the data from all of those machines to other locations. So Basically, what we had to do with this design is effectively, when a region fails, disable data distribution altogether. Um, so this means that while you're in a region failure scenario, you're, you're, you're in an inherently degraded state, you're pretty fragile, and it means that basically an operator of the system is going to need to, to drop the region that's failed immediately, discarding the replicas that are there, so the system can get back to a healthy state. Um, so that's pretty painful. The, the final thing I'll talk about that's, that's not great about this, this mode is that um, it has no awareness of the locality of the machines. So uh, I talked in the previous presentation about how the transaction logs and the storage processes like, have like a buddy system where for a given storage node, there's one transaction log shipping its all its data. Well, in this model, the transaction logs are spread across two of the regions and the storage servers across three. And basically, there's no... Uh, attempt to match up the transaction log that's serving data to, this, to have a store, to a storage server in the same region. So this is going to ex explode the amount of WAN traffic you have or cross-region traffic you're going to have because basically for all six of these storage replicas they could potentially be grabbing it from some tra transaction log across the network and even originally when you're writing the data to the transaction logs those were tra traveling across regions. So, you, for, so a given mutation might go across the network maybe eight times here. Um, so basically, that's, that's where we were at 5.2. Um, we had this asynchronous replication option that had this manual failover with, with the potential of data loss. And the two sides didn't really cooperate. Um, then we also had this three data center mode, this policy-based rep replication. It had high cross-region latencies, the high overhead, for, you know, lots more storage replicas, and this inefficient WAN communication. Um, so the goal with the 6.0 release was really to try and combine these approaches into something kind of unique and, and I think is really special. Um, so we're going to do asynchronous replication within a database um, and then some policy-based, um, use some of the policy-based designs from the other, uh, from the three data center mode on the, on the transaction logs. Um, and what we're going to do is take advantage of sort of the geographic features that are kind of provided to you by cloud providers today. And that is that basically, you know, like AWS or whatever uh, already has these two different notions of locality, right? You have regions, which are generally going to be distinct geographic locations that are far apart from each other. And then within an a region, you're going to have availability zones that are dis still distinct geographic locations usually. Um, however, uh, they're pretty close together. Um, and so there's like a difference here. The, the being farther away uh, apart is going to isolate you better from failures, um, for correlated failures. But being close together is going to give you a lot lower latency. Um, so the, the mode that we've come up with is basically taking advantage of this difference. Um, and so we're going to uh, make do synchronous replication of the transaction logs to multiple availability zones in one region. Um, and then do asynchronous replication uh, of the actual physical storage data across the regions. Um, what this basically means is that in the event that we lose one of the availability zones, uh, wherever we're serving writes at the moment, um, we can copy the data from the other availability zone, and it's just the most recent history, the last little bit of the, of the transaction logs uh, history. We can get that shipped to the other region, um, and then we can just seamlessly and automatically fail over with no data loss. Um, and, and basically, uh, as long as the availability zones, the two availability zones, don't die within you know, 10 to 30 seconds of each other, uh, it only, basically, like, you only have, it, they don't have to survive, both availability zones, zones don't have to survive a very long time, just enough to like, copy this last little bit of data. So 
we're getting the uh, failure resilience for the most part of being in multiple re regions, but we're only paying the latency cost of talking to multiple availability zones. And this is really powerful. Uh, it's kind of a best of both worlds scenario. Um, so I think I, I said this a lot of it at least, but I'll go through it. So the commit latencies are only talking to all of the uh, availability zones in a region. So very quick commit latencies again. Uh, and storage replicas, you only need two in each region. So this is much better compared to the, each of the other scenarios I described. Basically, you only have four total storage replicas. Because we have the, because they're all one cluster, we can use them to heal. We can use copies in one region to heal another region. So uh, you can lose all both replicas in one region plus another copy in the other region, and your database is still running just fine. Um, and then also we've uh, like optimized the design to only send every mutation across the network exactly one time. And I'll, and I'll get into how we do that, but it's, so it's going to be significantly more uh, efficient than the previous implementation. So it's time to bring back the boxes. <laughs> uh, so if you look inside of region one, you're going to see a diagram that's very similar to what I described this morning. Uh, it's got all the components there. And generally, we're basically going to be accepting commits in, in, that, in that, like that primary region. And the only thing that's really different about a 6.0 configuration, well, I'll go through the differences, is that when the proxies are writing stuff to the transaction logs, they're going to make sure the stuff is durable in both availability zones inside of that region. So the second region, you know, just has those uh, just has those extra transaction logs, and so you're paying a little bit of cost, but not too much to replicate your data there. Um, once the after everything has been committed, we're going to we have this new role called a log router, which is going to be responsible for pulling the mutations across the network across the regions, and it's going to pull every mutation across it exactly one time. So basically, the way we accomplish this is every mutation is basically, when it's created or when it's like committed, assigned a random one of these log routers. And that one log router is responsible for pulling it across the network, just purely random. Then uh, that means that the log routers now ha combined in total have exactly one copy of everything. And so the transaction logs on the other side will re-index the data for the storage server the, for the local storage servers, um, and so basically they're pulling, they're combining results from all the log routers and, and redistributing it. Um, so a lot of changes went on under the covers that you know are not in my diagram here, uh, related to these transaction logs, um, because we had to be a lot smarter about the pairing between transaction logs and storage servers, as I a little bit mentioned. Basically, we only want storage servers to be able to grab their data from the local transaction logs uh, to prevent the crosswind traffic. So what happens when our region one goes down? Uh, well, the first thing that's going to happen here, you can notice that the other AZ has survived, and maybe that's temporary. So the, the first thing that's going to happen is the cluster controller, the, the coordinators are going to detect that the previous cluster controller died. And they're going to pick a new one um, over in the other region. This cluster controller is then going to spin up the entire system. Uh, and the, the new transaction logs are going to use the log routers to stream the last little bit of data from those, la from those last remaining transaction logs across the network. And this is the part that you know, hopefully is generally quite quick. Uh, I put 30 seconds as an upper bound, but generally it's going to be a lot quicker than that. Um, once we've streamed all the data, now we're completely safe, even if we lose those other transaction logs. Just a, a pure short-term storage. Um, and the database will just continue seamless, you know, seamlessly running in region two. Uh, you have the option of having a different AZ on the second side, um, which might give you uh, some better failure pro properties when failing back to the first side, um, although it's optional to configure them. Uh, the coordinators in this scenario um, you'll notice that there's a third region here that has some coordinators in it. Um, the coordinators, as you'll recall, are relying on quorum-based logic to do uh, to provide like uh, failure properties. So uh, we need a majority of them alive. And so if we want the failure property of surviving one one region failure plus one additional machine failure, like 
three coordinators in three different regions is a nice way to accomplish that. You can, you'll, if you, you'll lose, losing a region takes down three of your copies, an additional machine will take you four, and there's nine total, so you still have a majority. Um, so, what's next here? Um, so, Foundation EB, like the 6.0 release, uh, has all of this in it uh, in, in working today. It can, fa it can you know, fail over to one region, fail back to another region. However, there's still you know, some work to go and there's still some things we'd really like to add. The current implementation only supports two regions. I mentioned all the way back at the very start that one of the reasons you're gonna want this feature is potentially to do local region, to, to replicate data, like lo to do local reads in different places. And so because we only have two region support, um, if you're using this for reading from lots of different places, it's not quite there yet. We're, we're hoping to get there. Uh, if also, um, even though we think it's a good trade-off between the, the availability zones and uh, regions in terms of your log replication, you, you might be super paranoid and you, and you might not care about a 40 millisecond commit latency. So you might want to synchronously replicate those logs across the network instead of doing uh, the async plan I showed. Um, so that'll come to uh, probably in the next release. Uh, the other caveat, the other big caveat here is there's always the potential um, that you lose an entire region, or that in, in, in which case, in the previous, in this design here, if you lose both, like all of your T logs simultaneously, you may want to switch to the other side, even if that means data loss. So this is equivalent to the FDBDR trade-off before. It's a decision no one wants to make, but we want to let you make the decision in the worst case scenario that like a, a meteor takes out something, you know, like, <laughs> uh, and there's probably easier ways that you lose both availability zones at the same time. <laughs> uh, so that feature exists from the CLI already in 6.0. However, it's not tested to the same standard as the rest of the code base. There are some really rare correctness problems related to the fact that if a machine comes back alive in the region you thought was dead, at the same time you're doing the command, it could possibly like, have a corrupt view of the world. So in any case, I want to throw it out there because we're super paranoid about these things. And <laughs> uh, but probably it's safe, but be careful. <laughs> uh, the last thing to talk about is um, write throughput is currently going to be reduced when a region is filled. So while a region is down, um, we enter a performance mode where the transaction logs are having to queue up all of the data that's bound for the other region. And currently, the transaction logs just aren't, uh, haven't been optimized for this use case. Uh, so what this means is that generally, when, when a region goes down in this configuration, you're going to have to, just like with the three data center mode, you know, within, if you have a high rate bandwidth workload, you're going to have to configure it to drop that remote, that remote region uh, pretty quickly so that you can flush out the log data that's being queued up for that region. Uh, the last thing I'll mention here is replicating to multiple regions uh, adds a new thing to monitor, uh, which is that you really need to pay attention to how far behind one region is from the other region. Uh, because the amount of data that's queued up in the log system bound for the other side is going to determine what you have to copy on a region failure. So if this thing gets out of hand and is an hour behind the other side, well, you're no longer safe against a region failure because you're going to spend a long time copying that, out, that hour of data before you can recover. Um, so it's really important operationally to, to monitor this lag and uh, if it gets you know, more than a few seconds to figure out what's going on. So uh, that's all I have. Uh, thank you guys. <laughs>